Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's Glenn Kellaway here from uh, the basement. From Orlando, Florida, in my daughter's backyard. Just having an amazing vacation. Last night we went to uh, the uh, wrestling taping that where my daughter and, uh, and son-in-law work. And I uh, had a lot of fun. I've been hitting some record stores. And I uh, use bookstores. I gotta give a shout out to Bright Light Books here in Winter Park, Florida, in Orlando. It's uh, I just love this freaking store, man. I'm telling you, I pick up CDs and records, and the people there are so nice. And uh, that's where I traded all my stuff. And I just look forward to going there. I could go every day and just sit and look. It's just a great store the way it's laid out, and they got, you know, the CDs are like floor to ceiling, uh, you know, bookcase style. And um, they give you chairs to sit in, like you can sit on a little bench so you can look at the first couple of rows. You know how hard it is to get down on the floor when you're like this? And they give you these little benches to sit on and you can just sit there and, and look at everything. It's great. Um, I did pick up a couple more albums. There's another store. There's two record stores in Orlando. I'm sure there's more, but they're the two, uh, I'd say the biggest ones and most well-known ones. One's Park Avenue CDs and Records, which I absolutely love. It's, it's a great store. And... Um, Rock and Roll Heaven, which is a really cool store. You can walk around there for hours, but I'm sorry, I find it expensive. So uh, I don't buy much from there. I bought a CD and a couple of pins for my hat. And I got this Jerry Garcia pin and a monkey's pin. And uh, yeah, I already had some of the other ones. So uh, yeah, the hat's filled up now. That's enough. Uh, anyway, I got a couple of records, five CDs to show you. Um, first of all, I want to talk about one I showed in my last video. It was The Smile. A light for attracting attention. I'm really liking this album. It's very dreamy and very, uh, so it's, it's a project from the guys from, um, Radiohead. Now, I am not an authority on Radiohead. I have never paid any attention to Radiohead whatsoever. Um, so, uh... This has Tom York and Johnny Greenwood. I think they're both from um, Radiohead. And uh, some of the other people on this that you guys might know that I don't know. Uh, Tom Skinner on drums. Jason Yardy on saxophone. Robert Stillman on saxophone. Flute Chelsea Carmichael. Trombone Nathaniel Cross. Um, yeah, it seems to be that same starter lineup. So the main guys seem to be Tom York, Johnny, Johnny Greenwood, and Tom Skinner. But really, really nice album. It's great. I kind of wish I had bought the vinyl now, but I was afraid of buying the vinyl just in case I didn't like it. But um, I strongly suggest you check that one out. I was impressed. So uh, a couple of vinyl records I bought um, from... Park Avenue CDs. I paid twenty dollars for this one. That's the way they package their used stuff. It's really like they just don't take in crap. I mean, everything's really in top shape. Um, this is a bluegrass album. So uh, the bluegrass band is made up of all stars: J.D. Crow, Tony Rice, Doyle Lawson, Bobby Hicks, Todd Phillips. Um, I mean, if you're a bluegrass fan, you know all those names. I paid $20 for this. It's on Rounder Records. Um, the bluegrass band pays tribute to kind of traditional artists. They do albums, um, you know, they'll do the uh, Flat and Scruggs one. And, and um, this is on Rounder. Um, Really looking forward to hearing this. It's a good find as far as I'm concerned. I don't I don't see these in the wilds of Canada very often. So I was really pleased to get that. And I bought, because one of the great live albums of all time is Little Feats, Waiting for Columbus. It's just been reissued. Um, it's been cut from the original master tapes 
by none other than Bernie Grunman, who is m the most respected, uh, I guess, engineer, we would call him in, uh, in record-making circles. Um, this is an incredible record. Um, if you go to uh, Norman Maslov's channel, Mazzy, he just did a shootout uh, with his original uh, OG uh, from 1977, his uh, Mobile Fidelity Analog uh, album from 2008, I think it was released, and this new reissue. Um, also, Michael, 45 RPM. Both these guys have just incredible channels. He just did a, sh uh, a comparison between his original 1977 uh, album and this reissue. Um, now, this didn't win either shootout. The original, the 77 one won on Michael's channel and the MoFi one on Mazzy's, but they both... I mean, not everyone has those. Uh, I don't have an original copy, and I don't have um, the cash to pay for a MoFi. So they both gave this high, high ranking. Um, it's supposed to sound amazing. I'm really looking forward to it. I don't have a turntable here, so I'm leaving it sealed. But if you've never heard Waiting for Columbus by Little Feet, do yourself a favor, check that out. Amazing. Next, CDs I picked up. One disappointment, they have uh, at this store, uh, Bright Light Books, they have a ton of uh, like bargain bin CDs for a dollar. And uh, I picked up three. And uh, I'll tell you about one I picked up. Iris DeMint. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Iris DeMint, but I never see her records or CDs in the wild ever, ever, ever. And I found a CD, Iris DeMint, for a dollar. It was called Lifelines, I think. And I grabbed this thing, and I'm just like almost doing cartwheels in the store. I'm so excited to get this CD. Pay the dollar for it. As soon as I get in the car, the first thing I do is I'm going to put it in the CD player. I open up the case. There's no disc. It's just a blank case. So I had to go back and start and get my dollar back. Anyway, so what else did I pick up for a dollar? I'm a big fan of uh, the Watkins family. Sarah and Sean Watkins are just amazing people and amazing musicians. And you combine them with uh, Chris Thiley, one of the best musicians on the planet. And uh, they had a band called Nickel Creek. And this was their first album, Nickel Creek. So um, I didn't have this. It came out in 2000. Um, I uh, bought it for a buck. I've been back into John Mellencamp because of that new album that he released this year that really got me, the One-Eyed Jacks. And, uh, I just love that record, and I started to renew my interest in his old albums, and I don't have too many CDs of his, so I picked up Uh Huh for a dollar. Uh, that's got you know a lot of great songs on this one, like Crumbling Down, T Pink Houses, Authority Song. Um, very cool for a buck. Okay, and then I got, uh, speaking of Little Feet Live, look at this. Little Feet and Friends join the band. This was executive produced. This is an interesting album. So it's uh, Little Feet doing their songs with guest artists. Now, this came out in 2008. It is really interesting. First of all, it was produced, executive produced, by Jimmy Buffett. Now, Jimmy Buffett, I know, is a big Little Feet fan, and um, one of the guys, Sam Clayton, who plays uh, percussion, plays with Buffett a lot, So, uh, but I know Jimmy is a huge fan. So he executive produced this album, um, produced by Mac McAnally and Bill Payne. Um, so check out the lineup of people who are playing on this thing. There's the thing. album. Back. Fat Man in the Bathtub with Dave Matthews and Sonny Landreth. Now let me uh, digress for a second. I am going to see John Hyatt and Buddy Guy tonight. Double Bill 
and John Hyatt's band has Sonny Landreth in it. So I'm so excited to see that. That's going to be an amazing show tonight. Um, I'll let you know how that went. Fat Man in the Bathtub, Dave Matthews, Sonny Landreth. Something in the Water, Bob Seeger. I listened to that yesterday. It just, it's a great version. Dixie Chicken with Vince Gill and Sonny Landreth. Um, Champion of the World with Jimmy Buffett. The Weight with Bela Fleck. That was the main reason my eyes busted open when I saw this. Time Loves a Hero with Jimmy Buffett. Willen with Brooks and Dunn. This Land is Your Land with Mike Gordon. Oh, Atlanta with Chris Robinson. Spanish Moon with Greg Fuller and Vince Gill. Trouble with Inara George. I don't know who that is. Sail and Shoes. you got to put on your sail and shoes with Emmy Lou Harris, Sam Bush, and Bela Fleck. And a bonus track, I Will Play for Gumbo with Sam Bush. I just, this is right up my alley, man. Never knew this album existed. There's a blurb about the whole album. If you if you see this, grab it. It's, I I was been listening to it in the car, and it's, it sounds fantastic. Oh, next, I picked up this Bowie album. I really like the instrumentals on Bowie's albums. Warzawa is probably um, the best one off of Low. Um, but there's a bunch of them. And um, I found this comp. It's called David Bowie All Saints Collected Instrumentals from 1977 to 1999. It's all the instrumentals off of David Bowie's albums. So um, I think this is very cool. Um, too bad they didn't let you read it easier. But uh, So A New Career in a New Town, uh, V2 Schneider, Abu, Abdul Majad, Weeping Wall, All Saints, Art De- Decade, Crystal Japan, Brilliant Adventure, Sense of Doubt, Moss Garden, Nuclean, Nucolm, Nucolum, looks like it's German, Mysteries, Ian Fish, UK Air, Subterraneans, Warzawa, and some are the Low Symphony. But um, very cool, because it's nice to have them all collected in one uh, disc. Okay, last but not least, I mentioned I went to... Um, uh, rock and Roll Heaven, and I picked up um, some buttons for my hat and one CD. I think I, I might have overpaid for this, but I really wanted it. I paid $20 for it. I'm a big fan of Big Star. If you guys haven't listened to Big Star, you should check them out. They're amazing. P- power Pop with um, Alex Chilton, who was in the Box Tops. This is just a great band, and both uh, I, I've got both their albums on vinyl, Big Star and number one record is called and Radio City is the second album. I found a twofer with both those albums on it. Fantastic. Uh, just love these records and be able to play them in the car now and throw them onto a, a memory stick so I can listen in the car was uh, big for me. Okay, one more thing. Show and tell. You know what this is? I haven't got a friggin' clue, but I'm in this discount store called Ross's, and it's sitting on a shelf all by itself. And right away, I figured out a use for it, but I don't know what it is. And it had no price tag on it. It looks like it kind of was a part for something or belonged to something. So I went up to the front desk, and I said, "Uh, is this for sale? And she's there looking at it, kind of acting weird. I said, I wasn't sure if it was one of your display things or something, and... She said, you want it? And I went, yeah. And so they said, $1.99. I said, I'll take that for $1.99. So I'm going to use it as a drying rack when I'm washing my records. I can stand a record up right there. When I got home, I tried a couple of my daughter's records in it. I might try and put a bit of soft felt or something in here to keep the records from getting scratched. But I've always been looking for something to hold my records up while they air dry. So... uh, that's it. 
Anyway, I will come back with a review of the uh, John Hyatt concert, which I'm really excited about, and probably some more CDs and stuff as they come up. We're having a great time in Florida. We won't be... Uh, uh, we're leave, staying another week and a day, I think, before we leave. Um, one more thing I want to mention. Uh, Sam St. John and I just uploaded a uh, video of us performing um, Shady Grove. Now, um, we enjoy doing these very much. And I, I'm sure Sam feels the same way. I wish we had more time to spend arranging these songs and doing them. But here's the way it goes. I get up at 4 a.m. in the morning, and we leave at 5 a.m. By the time we do all our stops and everything on the way, we get to Roanoke about 5 in the afternoon. I have to book into a hotel, get my wife settled in, make sure she's got some dinner, whatever else, and she's comfortable. Then Sam comes and picks me up. He lives about 20 minutes from the hotel that I stay in, maybe 15. And uh, he picks me up at 6 o'clock. We go for a bite to eat. It's 7 o'clock by the time we get to Sam's place. We have about three hours to um, record three songs that we've never played together before. And uh, we rehearse them like once or twice and go, okay, make sure we both kind of understand how we're going to arrange it more than anything. And then we record it and play it and we try and do it with harmonies and whatever and do it you know kind of, and then when you listen back you go no that wasn't good enough we missed on some of the parts of the harmonies or whatever so um it's really challenging to do it that way um if sam and i were together all the time i think we would do uh just we would blow everybody away so we hope you appreciate what we we do I know I had a commenter, and I appreciate the comments, and that they came from a good place. Is it said, Glenn, you got to add some harmonies to Sam's parts. And we worked on a harmony this week on a couple of songs, and I just wasn't feeling it. I, we just couldn't get it down, and it was like, I'd rather not do any harmony at all if it, it's hit and miss. So that's why the vocal performances are just solo vocal performances this time. And, um, yeah, we do our best. So we hope you enjoy them. And anyway, everyone have a great day. I appreciate all your support, and we'll talk soon. Take care.